Well, here we are coming onto the stage at the Gallagher Pavilion Great Hall. And as we move a little bit further onto the stage, you'll get a musician's eye view of the Great Hall. And we're going to just take a few more steps here toward the back of the stage so that you'll get to see what it really looks like as you're a musician sitting in the orchestra. So, as you'll see, as our camera guy Blake pans out to the, to the rest of the hall, the first thing you'll notice is that there aren't any people in the seats, that the hall is empty. That's perfectly natural as we're getting ready for a rehearsal here, but it's not going to be very natural seeming tomorrow night when we actually do the performance. So like many performing arts organizations, the Waterloo Cedar Falls Symphony has had to really make a lot of adjustments due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And one of those is that unfortunately we're not going to be doing concerts for live audiences until well into 2021. You'll also notice as you look at the stage, and Blake maybe just pan over and look at the, the rest of the stage. You'll see that there aren't very many players, and that's because we want to be safe and have good safety protocols, have the players space well apart. And you'll also notice that there are some little towels on the floor for the, for the wind players to catch um, certain substances that happen when they, when they play. Um, it's all part of, of the about 20 safety protocols that we've put in place to make these concerts happen and make it possible for our musicians to get back together and, and make some music for you. So, looks like the rehearsal's about ready to start, so let's move on to our next tour. Didn't happen. <laughs> you know, sometimes when you're moving from the stage out into the into the audience area, it's kind of a it's kind of surreal the way that your perspective changes from looking out as a performer to becoming an audience member. So just as we make this progression back to the back of the hall, you might want to think about that and just kind of visualize yourself moving in this direction. So, come on. So here we are looking at the, the panorama of the Great Hall. And so if you're, as you're entering the hall from the main lobby, which we'll, we'll visit here in just a few minutes, you see just kind of the scope of the, of the facility. Um, and we're gonna take another quick walk here in just a second where we'll have not only the two we've already, two perspectives we, that we've already looked at, but a third perspective from our tech crew's viewpoint. You know, we are so fortunate to be able to work with the professional staff and the tech crew here at, at Gallagher Blue Dorn. Uh, since I've been here, which is a little over two years now, um, we have never run across a scenario that the tech crew here cannot take care of. Um, and in all of the shows that they bring in, the Broadway shows and the, the symphony orchestras and plays and kids shows and all kinds of great entertainment that they bring here, there are just a myriad of challenges that happen as, uh, as you produce a show. And I'm just, I'm just really so, so glad that we have them to, to lean on for our, our events. Um, so let's, let's move over here just a little bit. And so, as you can imagine, there are cameras, tele, video cameras out in the hall that we're going to be use, utilizing for the, 
a performance tomorrow night. The tech people that run those cameras sit right here. Um, and from here, they direct the cameras that are going to be used in the hall. And there are four fixed cameras in the Great Hall and that are controlled directly by basically joysticks here. And then there will also be some handheld cameras um, tomorrow night that will give you as, a, as a, the audience some different perspectives on the performance. So you might see a close-up shot of, of an oboe player or a horn player. Then you might see the entire string section playing together. You might see a shot from back in the, on the stage looking at Jason and picking up his, his facial expressions, his hand gestures, just a really fascinating shot. And then I'm sure there will be times when it, it'll just be kind of a wide, a wide shot when everybody's playing at the same time. Um, so um, those are, can be really, really moving moments and that will be captured um, because of the, the technology that we have here available to us. So as the, as the music will probably be starting here in just a couple of minutes for the rehearsal, let's, um, let's take another walk and let's just go out into the, into the lobby for just a minute and uh, take in some of the, the sights out there. So for those of you that, that attend performances here at the Gallagher Blue Dorn on a regular basis, this is almost like home, and it's certainly like home to, to us. Um, this is a, such a wonderful, beautiful lobby. Um, uh, I'm going to just suggest that maybe we just uh, walk around a little bit here and let everybody take in the beauty of, of this lobby area. And while Blake is, is giving you those perspectives and those shots, um, I would just put in a little personal anecdote here. This is actually my second time that I've worked for the Waterloo Cedar Falls Symphony. Right out of graduate school at UNI in the early 1980s, I worked for the Waterloo Cedar Falls Symphony. And at that time, there was talk in the community about how is the Waterloo Cedar Falls Symphony going to adapt as far as performance space in the future. And so there was a lot of talk about moving the orchestra from its home at Waterloo West High School into a new performing arts center. At that time, it was just very, very early in the, in the discussions. Um, but you could always, you could, you could tell from the meetings that I was in when I was here during that time, that there was vision and there was, and there was energy and there were the right kind of people who were gonna make this happen. And so fast forward then to 2018 when I came back um, as the executive director with the symphony. And I was so excited to come into this hall and see it. And as I came in, I reflected back on some of those meetings back in the early 1980s. Um, and the vision of people like Ed Gallagher, his wife, Catherine Gallagher, Carl Blue Adorn, whose names are on this, on this facility, the UNI community, the Cedar Falls community, the Waterloo community, uh, the musicians community, all coming together and making this happen. So it's, it's just a wonderful story about how this developed. And the result is, is just this, this magnificent facility that actually is, is going to be getting a facelift here soon. Um, and become even better. So we're just, uh, we're delighted to be the, one of the major tenants here. And we have our offices here. And um, so it's just a really fun place to come to a performance, to come to a symphony concert, um, come to another performance that's on the artist series for the Gallagher Blue Dorn. Um, and not only is it a fun place to come to concert, but I can tell you it's a fun place to come to work too. So, so let's, um, let's move on. Um, why don't we take a little walk up to the, the gallery level? Sometimes we're not up at the, the top of the facility um, and looking down on the stage. That's a little different perspective. So let's, let's take a walk here.
So here we are in the upper tier of the Great Hall, looking down on the stage. Um, and um, it's really uh, interesting to be this close to some of the inner workings of the upper part of the, of the hall. If you look over this way, it might be a little bit dark, but a lot of the lighting equipment is up in the, the recesses of the ceiling. And you'll notice the, the round structure in the center that are, is composed of acoustical tiles um, to improve the sound of the hall. And you know, it's interesting, um, one of my first experiences in a, in a performing arts center uh, seeing a, an orchestra live was when I saw, first saw the Chicago Symphony in uh, Orchestra Hall in Chicago. And if you look around this gallery, there's, there's a pretty good what's called a rake, which is the, the angle of the seats. Uh, but in Orchestra Hall, it is like skydiving. <laughs> Off of, a, off of an airplane. Um, and I was just astounded because there were, there were so many of the patrons that were at the orchestra that day um, that were older. And they were, here are some, some people trying to navigate the stairs coming down and I almost wanted to just stand right in front of them and, and just make sure that they didn't tumble down the stairs. Um, but uh, uh, so this is, this is a fun perspective too. Um, and if you ever um, want to come to a performance and, and be up here, this, is, uh, this can be a great experience as well. And now we've got some, happily, we've got some music going um, to accompany our tour. So maybe I'll just let this, let you listen to the music for a moment before we move on. All right, so next we're going to go back down to the lobby area and make our way around to the far side of the Great Hall from where we started and just go in the backstage area there. So let's, let's take a walk. So now we're coming back to the lobby area. I will also mention that the, um, if you see the open doors in front of me here, uh, that leads back to the, the School of Music area. And uh, a large part of the School of Music studio spaces, some office spaces are in Gallagher Blue Dorn. And while I'm talking about the School of Music uh, and talking about adjusting to the COVID-19 situation, uh, when we get backstage here, I'm going to show you something that has been going on here at UNI since the beginning of the year with the, with the ensembles. And um, it's really pretty fascinating um, how that they've uh, adjusted to the COVID-19 realities um, for the ensemble rehearsals. So as we're making our way back to the backstage area, I wanted to talk to you a little bit more about what's going to happen tomorrow night. So this will be the first of our online performances by the Waterloo Cedar Falls Symphony. And it starts at 7 p.m. And we will be broadcasting the concert uh, on our Facebook page and also on our YouTube channel. So to find the performance, you just need to go to the facebook.com uh, or to youtube.com and search for WCF Symphony and you will be able to navigate to where the uh, performance will be broadcast. Um, also, before the performance at 
6.30, Jason Weinberger will be doing a free concert chat uh, and about Beethoven, about his music, about some of the collaborations that we've had for really what is a Beethoven festival. So um, if you would like to look online, look at our, our wcfsymphony.org website, you'll see a listing of all of the things that are going to be going on over the, the weekend here and, um, and a recap of some of the things that, that will have gone on before the performance. So, um, so but be sure to join us tomorrow night, 6.30 for the pre-concert chat, 7 o'clock for the uh, performance, and the name of the concert is a Beethoven, or celebrating, sorry, celebrating Beethoven. So, you know, if we ever get to the point where people are still talking about us when we're 250 years old, you'll get to have a concert named after you. So let's, let's continue our journey back to the backstage here. So I was talking about the, the adjustments that the School of Music has made. So these are actually plastic shower curtain material cubicles. So for instance, when the, when the jazz band rehearses, when the concert bands rehearse, the orchestra rehearse, each musician is actually inside one of these cubicles. And um, you may have seen on Facebook, there was a picture of it all assembled uh, out in the hall um, a couple of weeks ago. Um, but it's something that I think musicians, if they ever thought about this before, it was probably in one of their nightmares. Um, but uh, what it does is it allows their to be protection from aerosols, um, obviously the social distancing, and it allows the ensemble music to go on for the kids to still be able to experience the ensembles and to, to, to play together and to work together. So it really is a pretty innovative and uh, forward thinking thing that the, the School of Music has done to, to make this work. So, as we um, wrap up here, we'll uh, let the music continue to play behind us, but um, I would like to uh, thank you all for joining us tonight for the, the first installment of The Richer Experience. Um, again, it's just one of several online offerings that we're going to be putting out over the next few months until we're able to go back to, to live concerts and uh, bringing it to the, to the community. Uh, I would like to just take a minute here and thank the sponsors of our, all of our online events for this fall. Dee and Dave Vandeventer have uh, made it possible for us to offer online events free of charge to the public. Um, also the Waterloo Community Foundation has helped us with support for the performance tomorrow night and um, is a great partner in the, in the Cedar Valley community. And then I'd also like to just thank Steve Kerrigan, um, my colleague here um, at Gallagher Blue Dorn, and the great staff at uh, Gallagher Blue Dorn for all the help that they provide to us. So, if talking about sponsorships, if you would like to make a contribution to the Waterloo Cedar Falls Symphony, this is really a good time to do it. Uh, we have launched what we're calling the Ready to Play campaign. And this campaign is has three different objectives. One is to replace ticket revenue that we've lost because we're not doing concerts for live audiences. The second is to reach more people online. So through these efforts, we're fairly optimistic, we actually are optimistic about being able to bring more people in to experience the music of the Waterloo Cedar Falls Symphony just online instead of live. And, and lastly, we want to make sure that the Waterloo Cedar Falls Symphony is a vibrant musical organization that is, bit, that is founded and brought forward on a solid financial basis. It's difficult in this time, I'm not gonna, not gonna sugarcoat it, it's difficult in this time of the pandemic to make that happen. 
So the Ready to Play campaign is our effort to ask our community to just help us just a little more. If you give to the annual fund, maybe put on another $100 or maybe a little more onto your contribution and help the symphony emerge from the pandemic strong and vibrant. So if you would like to make a contribution, you can go to our website, wcfsymphony.org, and um, make a contribution there, designated for the annual fund, designated for, for the Ready to Play campaign. And we just really, really are sincerely grateful for your support. So that ends our, our tour tonight. I hope you've enjoyed seeing a little bit of the backstage uh, happenings and, and all of the things that have to come together to make uh, this weekend successful for us. And so everyone, please stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you tomorrow night.